Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob Carter, special championship wrestling reporter, telling you about the big card coming up at the Chicago Amphitheater, Saturday, November 2nd, 8.30 in the evening. It's going to be an exciting card. Matches are being signed for it now. And uh, on that card, a tag team match that you've all been looking for in the Chicago land for a long time, heading in race against Dick the Bruiser and his cousin, the Crusher. Now, before uh, we say more about this card or that match, I like, would like to remind you, of course, where you can get your advanced ticket sales for Chicago Area Professional Wrestling uh, at all of the Chicago Area Ward stores, Morris Men's Shop on South Halstead, or Ticket Central at 212 Michigan. And, of course, you can get mail orders, post office box 1262, Chicago, Illinois, 06909. Now, don't forget to get your mail orders in as promptly as possible. It's 24-hour mail service. As soon as your order is received, the tickets will be back in the mail back to you. And, of course, you can pick up your own tickets uh, and select them personally by going to any Chicago area award store, Morris Men's Shop, or Ticket Central. Now, to get back to this card, the one match that has been signed, heading in race against the Dick the Bruiser and his cousin, the Crusher, and I've asked uh, one of the finest wrestlers in the business today, that is Wilbur Snyder, to come in here and tell us a little bit about this, Wilbur. Thank you very much, Bob. I just uh, happened to be around in the studio at this particular time. Uh, I wasn't on this card, and uh, not on the next one. Uh, but I do have other commitments, and I would just like to explain a little bit about uh, the reason that this match has been signed. Uh, Crusher and Bruiser against Sinning and Race. I think everybody's seen the match, which would have been last night. Uh, no, knows how they actually literally carry, had to carry the little midget out of that ring. And I think that it's kind of got to all the fans a little bit tonight. Uh, it was last night that they got a hold of the Crusher and Bob Luce, I'm talking of uh, promoter matchmaker Bob Luce, and this match was made last night. Bruiser and Crusher consented to wrestling, hitting and race on this next card which uh, the date is the November 2nd right Saturday. right so that's the way this came about and uh, unfortunately they haven't he hasn't had time to put any of the other matches together yet but uh, again I say the way that the Henning and race uh, well it, it was a kind of distasteful impact and uh, again this is the way it came about and this will be uh, one of the main events on that next November card. Well, Wilbur, thank you so much for coming in and explaining this to us because we were at a little bit of a loss after last night wondering exactly what had happened here. And, thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Wilbur Snyder. Now, let's get back to the action in the ring. This match, ladies and gentlemen, is for two out of three falls with a 30-minute time limit. Two out of three falls, or 30 minutes. Introducing first, and they lay claim to the title of World's Tag Team Champions. They are from parts unknown. They weigh in at 486 pounds. With their manager and advisor, Captain Willie, ladies and gentlemen, the Assassins, number one, and number two, the Assassins. Now, uh, we are still waiting momentarily for their opponents, and I heartily hope that you haven't frightened them off already. Everybody's afraid of us, that's what it is. They're all afraid of us. Well, they should be here right now, Chuck. And as I'll tell you before, we're the greatest, we're going to be the greatest man. Where are they? They're all there. Why don't they hear? Why don't they hear? Why don't they hear right now? Where are they? They're afraid of me. 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 They know we're going to beat them before they even get in the ring. That's the reason they don't come down. They're chicken. They're afraid. They're going to better get somebody else. They're chicken. That's the sire of that other guy. Right. 
call your attention that they are coming down the ramp right now. Two out of three falls, 30 minutes, their opponents, ladies and gentlemen, from Indianapolis, Indiana, and from Denver, Colorado. Their combined tag weight is 473 pounds, 473. Ladies and gentlemen, Prince Pullen and Rocky Montero. exceptionally exciting match because Rocky Montero has met the assassins in the ring before and so has Pullen but never has Montero or Pullen teamed together so we should have I think the best of the two against the tag team champions the title is not at stake although it's a two out of three fall match Willie being verbally ordered back to the corner by the referee, and I have a, an inkling he's going to be frightened by more than words before this night's over. So it'll be assassin number one. Incidentally, this is a, an interesting thing here. As this match gets underway, I'll tell you. In all the matches I've ever seen, here we go. The Pullen and the number one assassin. All the matches that I've seen with the assassins in them. There has been no time that I can remember where the bigger one, which is outside right now, talking to the little one inside the ring, where the, where the big one has started the match. It's always been the little one that starts the match. Momentarily in the referee's hold, and a slap off the rope. As Willie gets back up to his feet, number one indicating something gesturing back over the corner, I think it was because Montero was up behind the ropes and he wanted him back behind the ropes before he was going to engage in any wrestling effort at all with Prince Pullen. Pullen ducked under. Here's a rapidly improving young man. He has highs and lows in the profession itself. Some days he looks very, very good. There's a good tackle. There's a hip lock, and all of that looks good. Then there are other days when he just can't put together anything. It's like uh, a songwriter trying to compose a song, I guess. Some days he can put the right chords together, and the next day, uh, nothing but this chord. But uh, Montero's still outside the rope as both assassins in there momentarily on Pullen, he still comes back up to the side headlock. Look out for a push-up. A real tight one. There it is. Waits for him. Turns him around and right over into the hip marry. On the mat. Rolled over and the shoulder's down for a count of one, but... Pullen with a good flail of the legs, able to keep the count off. A vice-like side head. You know, it's amazing. A lot of you people, ooh, into the knee, the tag, and here's number two assassin. A lot of you people cannot believe that these wrestlers are as big as they are. For those of you who have met me, I will tell you that I weigh about 229, I'll vary between 229 and 231 or 32, and I look like a midget as far as muscles are concerned against these guys. Some I'm a little bit taller than maybe one or two of them, but uh, by no means do I have the muscle or the physical definition that they have, and yet I weigh 230. So uh, when you see these guys in the ring, and you hear me call them off 
236, 238, and 240. Believe me, those extra eight pounds they have are all good, solid muscle. And then you get up into the size of Kaniski and Bruiser, Snyder. Snyder uh, becoming more and more athletic as the days go on. This fellow, he officially weighs in at about 243 to 245. And I do understand Wilbur told me once that if he doesn't watch out, if he doesn't stay really hard on physical training, a lot of football in his family and uh, boys in the neighborhood, and he likes to play football with the youngsters in the neighborhood, teaching the rudiments that he learned. If he doesn't stay with all this, he can go through the 250 without any trouble at all. But uh, it's pretty hard for you to imagine men that big until you, as I said, realize that you can govern by something that's maybe more familiar to you that I weigh about 228 to 230 and 231. There's a chop right to the side of the head and another headbutt as we've seen both Pullen and Tom Jones in the previous match use the headbutt. This is something that was made quite popular by Bobo Brazil and uh, just about all young Negro wrestlers coming along have used that same move. They followed in his footsteps and it seems to be quite effective. And I remember uh, Another, here's Montero trying to pull one of the assassins off. He's got the number one assassin by the side of the head. And believe me, there's nobody that can unfork a lethal right any more than Montero can. You have pulling over that top rope there. Just momentarily and long enough to crack that right to the midsection. Notice the gauntlets on the right arm, right forearms of these assassins. Chopped to the side of the head. And again, Pullen uses the head, but notice he uses the side of his head. The side of his forehead. Really up again. And there's that right again from Montero. And now Pullen. Baby, look at those. Three good solid ones now. He'll pummel the midsection with left and right for a while and cross a couple up to the chin. And even one of the assassins likes to get in uh, a blow on his own partner there. A couple of side headlocks now, we'll have a railroad here in just a moment. Looks as if we may. A one, a two, and a three, and a mm, head on. Two diesel locomotives meeting head on, and they're both down. Montero. Again, uncorks the right to the side of the head and threatens off on the referee now. The referee indicates to him that he's winding up at the wrong one, and if he makes such a motion as he has before, he's going to go back to the dressing room. So out he goes. Out, but good. And into the rope. Tying up here as the other one tries to pull Montero from the ring. And let's see what comes next. Lefts and rights, and this one can't move at all. Number two assassin back to his corner as a tackle from outside the ring by Pullen sets it up for the battering ram and baby don't try that one there's about 235 pounds standing on you number one out through the ropes as number two has untwined himself over there the tag Montero, not really caught napping, but you can't see him come from all directions. There's a slap to the side of the head, and he's using the gun. You're boxing with the wrong man, Mr. Assassin, because this fellow used to spend a lot of his time as a pugilist in that ring. There's the tag. Pulling with a headbutt, a right to the chin, slides off the headlock, and picks it up from the front. 
Championship Wrestling. It's a new era, of course, a lot of new faces, a lot of new stars, and these the world's tag team champions are a perfect example of it off the top rope with that right foot to the midsection, and we have a count, two, and a three, and that's it. And the time for this first fall, 10 minutes, 20 seconds, 10, 20, goes to the Assassins over Prince Pauline Rocky Montero. More to come in the second fall in just a moment. Crossed with a 
right forearm there just momentarily ago, and then another drag of the fingernails and fingers across the eyes. Look at that. Well, what's done by one illegally does not make it legal for the other, and the referee is entirely within his rights to attempt to separate them. And the referee cannot, if he knows what's good for him really, use any physical or any body action, any body, body effort at all to separate the wrestlers. The referee is protected by commission rules, which means, of course, that if he should receive any deliberate injury inside that ring, there would be suits and fines involved. This, of course, does not pertain to the wrestlers in the ring. And should the referee get some body contact in there with any one of these wrestlers volunteered on his part, then the wrestler is quite capably allowed to defend himself, and the referee avoids all this protection he has from the commission. So that's one of the reasons why they resort to the disqualification of counts and why they cannot do any more than what they do a lot of times. There's a headbutt by Pullen. About the third one, he's thrown at both these assassins. A nice drop kick. Puts him to the mat. Let's see. We have a count of one. That's it. A short right under the throat by Montero as he viciously slams the face of the assassin to the mat. And again, Montero outside the ropes as Pullen goes for the pin. And again, the count just barely reaches two. Over the ropes and... This qualification count commenced. Look out here, boomerang into the rope. Goes for a tag and Montero completely out of the corner. No opportunity to complete the tag. And it's Pullen left at the mercy of the assassin until Montero makes that rope. some of the sap out of the legs for sure. Again, as this time down to the mat. A flying mare and at the mercy of that top drop off the rope. And the clincher. One, two, and three, and that's it. In two consecutive falls, the time on that second fall, six minutes and 27 seconds, 6.21. The winners in two consecutive falls, the Assassins with their manager, Captain Willie. More championship wrestling to come. Stick around. We'll be back in just a moment.